The audio equipment world is plagued by the alphabet soup syndrome. Do you have an XLR for this 58? I need a DI box and a quarter inch adapter for that eighth inch aux cable. <sighs> by the end of this, you'll be able to name all those cables with confidence. Let's just get this out of the way. A cord, when you're talking about sound equipment, a cord is basically the same as a cable, is basically the same as a line, basically the same as a connector. Great. There's really two kinds of cords that you're gonna come across, and the first is analog cords, so we'll go through those. The XLR cable, this guy. Like so many other audio things, its name is an amalgamation of serial number and model. The X stands for, it was an X series, Canon X specifically, named for its inventor. The L stands for latch, because of that little latchy guy on there. And then the R stands for the rubberized polymer that is a, was around the pins to protect them. X series latch rubberized cables. They are balanced. They're three pin because one of those pins is a ground. And these are probably the most common cables in a studio, the XLR. RCA cables. These are old fashioned and have mostly been replaced. RCA stands for Radio Corporation of America, and they invented this in the 1930s so that you could hook up your Victrola to your giant piece of mahogany radio furniture. <laughs> Their catalog from the 30s is amazing. Pretty soon everybody was using these kinds of connectors because they were very, very convenient. We still see them on older equipment, such as older stereos and VCRs. RCA cables always come in pairs. The red side is the right side. White side is the left side. Think, just remember, red, right, white, left. And sometimes you'll see the yellow in there too, where it comes as a, as a trio. And the yellow is for video. Quarter inch cable, this guy, this is a very, old kind of plug originally designed for telephone lines and transferring telephone and radio information like those giant old-timey switchboards where you see marge at the switchboard plugging in and out of them that's what these were made for quarter inch cables can either be mono or stereo quarter inch that is mono it's also known as ts or unbalanced quarter inch cables. TS stands for tip sleeve. So there's the tip and there's the sleeve. And you see there's just like this one notch. I'm not going to call it a ring because that's a different thing, but it's a, <laughs> a bar. <laughs> it's got one of them, so it's mono. And that's a TS. Sometimes you'll see that on equipment where it's TS or TRS quarter inch. And that stands for tip ring sleeve so it's got the tip it's got this ring and then the sleeve so there's like two bars right two stereo it's balanced trs quarter inch cable the mini version of the quarter inch is the eighth inch and you've seen these like to plug stuff into your phone or headphones it's basically just a mini version of the quarter inch. I was very pleased to research and find out that adapters cause no signal quality loss. Unless of course you have like a, a bad, badly made adapter that will just fall apart or one that's loose or that you haven't connected well, then you're gonna have problems. If it's a functional working adapter, you get no loss of signal or signal quality. Yay, <laughs> no loss of signal quality, woo! Moving on to digital cords because we're living in a digital world, especially with home studio recording. The first one that we'll talk about is the MIDI connector. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface, MIDI. This was one of the first cables that connected instruments to a computer directly. And it has five pins, you can see that there. 
they only carry information one way. So if you have something with a MIDI port, but it only says MIDI in, like I have this little Korg analog synth, and it only says MIDI in. So that means really the information can only go into this, say, um, to pick up the, the tempo off of my DAW. It can't take information from this to my computer because it's only got a MIDI in. My interface you can see here has two, it has an in and an out for the MIDI. Anyway, musical instrument, digital interface, more of the alphabet soup. MIDI connectors have largely been replaced by USB connectors. And there's lots of different kinds of USBs, some you're very familiar with, and I'm, I'm not really going to talk about those, like the regular USB and the USB-C and the USB mini. We're very used to those from our cell phones. But the ones that show up more often in audio equipment are the USB 2 type B. Sometimes these are also known as printer cables. They're like the squarish kind. My uh, Akai MPK Mini uses this as a, connect a connection to my computer. I'm not exactly sure why. I think it has something to do with how much signal it can carry and how fast. So you may see these. I pick them up at thrift stores all the time. Otherwise, they're kind of expensive and hard to find. So check your local thrift store. The other kind of odd USB cable you might run into is the USB 2.0 Mini B, which it's like a, I don't know, it looks like, like this guy. Uh, and my Zoom recorder, you can see, has one of these ports for this sort of USB. It's kind of unusual. Again, sort of hard to find, specialty item. But sometimes you can score them at thrift stores for 25 cents. I hope that was a helpful run through of the most common kinds of audio cables, connectors, lines, whatever you want to call it. All those cords that you might run into in a studio or in a live venue. And you will need to know the names of if you want to do production with other people. <laughs> it's not so embarrassing as to be like, can you hand me the, the cable with the thing? Uh, you know, with the, yeah, the, the one that's, now you'll be able to say, hey, I need a, an XLR for this DI box, okay? If this did not answer your question about a kind of audio cable that you want to, and you, or you want to know more about how they work, you can go to a great video, I'll link it in the description, from Music Repo. She goes into great detail about the audio cables used in studio and she focuses on home recording. and It's just great, so check her out too. Give a like and subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. I do weekly videos on audio production things. Sometimes I do like cakewalk run through videos. If you like that kind of thing, you might like to subscribe. I hope you have a great week. Bye for now.